<laughs> it's real. When you hear it's that, it's Tuesday. <laughs> Instead of going back to the Pima Air and Space Museum because the weather's kind of nasty, we're going to do another museum, the Titan Missile Museum. It's about half an hour away, inside, 35 floors down. No, 35 feet down underground. That should be drier. Maybe it was 35 floors. Regardless, it's underground. Dry. Inside. We'll have that information and those facts for you when we're there. The Titan Missile Museum is located in the town of Green Valley, Arizona, which is about 20 minutes south of Tucson. This decommissioned missile silo was once part of a chain of 54 Titan II sites that were on 24-hour continuous alert from 1963 to 1987. All of the other sites have since been demolished, but this one was kept and is now a National Historic Landmark. What once was a deterrent to nuclear war is now a place to educate visitors on the Cold War and the people and technology involved in the Titan II missile program. This unassuming building is the entrance site to visit the largest and most powerful land-based nuclear missile in America's arsenal. Visitors can walk in and schedule. Stop. Back it up. It's a hint and hints. This is a hint and hints. Yes. So we are at the Titan Missile Museum. Okay. And we thought we could just show up and uh, hop on the 12 o'clock <laughs> tour. Well, apparently you can't do that as easily because it's pretty busy. So yeah. you can go online and make reservations for your tour ahead of time. It's winter, so obviously there's a lot of folks that come down to the warmer weather. And so this is actually the busy season. And yeah, she panicked, like, how many are in your party? Three. Uh, um, well, I guess uh, we could get you in the 130. Okay. Yeah. We weren't stressed, but... She was. She was. <laughs> so you can call ahead and do reservations. Or go online. Yep. Mm -hmm. That's your hint and hint. Tours are $13.50 for adults and $10 for ages 5 through 12. The hour-long tours begin in a military-style briefing room and involves a safety briefing and a short video on the history of the Titan II missile. This 103-foot-tall missile was 10 feet in diameter, weighed 330,000 pounds, and carried a 9-megaton warhead. It could travel a distance of 6,000 miles and reach speeds of 16,000 miles per hour, delivering its payload to the target location in 25 to 30 minutes. The next part of the tour takes you to the site and involves taking 55 steps down to the missile complex. If you have trouble with stairs, we do not recommend this tour. The missile complex was built 35 feet underground and was protected by three-ton blast doors and concrete walls that were as thick as eight feet in certain spots. Four-person crews would pull 24-hour shifts here at the site eight to nine times per month, and the next part of the tour takes you to the control center where they worked and waited for the call that thankfully never came. The tour guides here are fantastic. They not only give you information, but really impart on you what life was like and what the responsibilities of the crew were like. You're in charge of the crew. You're in charge of maintenance people that may come here, security people that may come here. As a matter of fact, you're in charge of all these VIPs we have here today, coincidentally. You're in charge of all the equipment. You're in charge of the missile, and you're in charge of a nine megaton warhead. After giving you the background on the crew and equipment, they then walk you through a launch order. It's been a while, but you've been trying to get that coffee sitting on your desk and you just haven't had a chance. A lot of stuff's going on. First of all, there's no carpet, no sound attenuating pan uh, panels. It's very noisy. Not only is this equipment noisy, the no equipment below is noisy. These squawk boxes are going off literally 10, 20, 30 times a day. There are messages that are coming through that may might be important, might not be, but as you go for your coffee, this happens. And then the last part of the message was, this is a launch order. Well, we now open our respective locks, we go into the safe, and we pull out two keys. One that's here, it's already inserted, and one that's over here in the deputies console. We also pull out, out among 20, about two dozen of these authentication cards that are in the safe, we look at the second line of the code, and let's assume the second line starts with 2K, 2 kilo. We pull that authentication card out, we open it, and if these characters match the characters on the second line of the code that we just copied, it means two things. Number one, the president has in fact authorized this launch. 
And number two, he has done so because we are a retaliatory facility. It means that there are missiles on their way to the United States. On your count. Three, two, one, launch. Fifty-eight seconds, fifty-eight seconds from the time we turn those keys to the time our missile is headed for Target 2. It's going to take about 30, 35 minutes and Target 2 will no longer exist on the face of the planet. And you did that. You did it with some help. <laughs> <laughs> the final part of the tour takes you down the long tunnel to the missile silo where you get to see a Titan II missile. You're free to walk around the above ground area after the tour. There is a lot to see in the area and looking down at the Titan II from above is quite an experience. The area is also a great place for kids to finish up a little assignment that the museum offers them. Corbin's working on his junior missileer badge. He's the only person that could say it's time to order the missiles. The president. All right. Hold on, what did you get today? I got a Junior Missile or Titan Missile Museum Iron On Patch and cool. a Junior Missile or, um You get a certificate? Can you hold everything up? The certificate and and smile. Tucson would be our last stop in Arizona as we headed west, and we couldn't leave without visiting the national park that is built around the universal symbol of the west, the saguaro cactus. Saguaro National Park is over 91,000 acres and is split into two districts. The Tucson Mountain District is on the west side of Tucson, and the Rincon Mountain District on the east where we visited. This district includes an eight-mile cactus loop drive that was perfect for the short amount of time we had. The one-way loop takes you through the heart of a beautiful saguaro forest where you can see some of the nearly 3,500 plant species that grow in the park. And of course, you see some amazing Sopporo. That's a nice guy. We're going to post about him. Yeah. We'll do a, if a Sopporo gains one arm every 50 years, how old do you think that guy is? That's just crazy. He's probably a couple of hours. We may have found the oldest Sopporo in the world. So the more arms and little nubbins and things that you see on them, the older they are in that one. That's probably the most arms we've ever seen on one. There are also a lot of stops along the loop. If you're looking for an easy walk with opportunities to learn more about the park, then we recommend the Desert Ecology Trail. The quarter mile paved trail gives you the chance to learn more about the plants and animals that live here. And we learned a lot. We've been in the Southwest for a while and we've seen a lot of cactuses, cacti, and we've learned a lot. But unfortunately we've been calling uh, Choyas, cholas? Teddy bear chola cactus. It's currently <laughs> teddy bear choya. Because those are the cool looking ones that are. Right there. No, that's not it. But there's a giant one over there. I can see it from here. Yeah, so you learn something new. I guess that's why you come out into nature and come to national parks to learn things like how to pronounce words properly. If you ever see a. Um, what is the little type of monster? He, if you ever see a Gila monster, don't worry, they're they're venomous, but they're just offensive. They don't attack. They just defend themselves? Yeah, they're just offensive. And they only need four egg meals a year to last them. Egg rolls? They only need four meals. Four meals egg. a year? Yeah, they only wow. need four meals a year to last them. So unfortunately, we're only really spending a couple hours at Saguaro National Park. There's there's two sides, there's the west and the, and the east region. We should have come earlier. We didn't know how beautiful it is. Yeah. How many walking trails they had, but there's always next year. 
Yeah, we may end up in the Southwest again next year. Who knows? But this is this is amazing. And for the people who live in Tucson, I mean, there is so much. You've got tons of history. You've got two national parks. Well, one national park, but it's split into two. Multiple yeah. museums yeah. of all different kinds. You know, all different uh, history, airplanes, missiles, the biodome, science. Biosphere. <laughs> Biosphere. We keep going about, but and then you've got this weather in January when our families up north are freezing. Freezing. Minus four. Snow. You know, two to three feet of snow in a night. And it's, you know, it's a pleasant 55, 60 degrees. So there's 175 miles of trails in Seguro National Park. And we're just doing yeah. a couple of small ones today that are on the eight loop drive. Yeah. So that when you come into the visitor center and the East Park, um, there's an eight mile loop, which is what we're doing. And that is just like the tip of the iceberg for the rest of the park. They do offer tours. They uh, will do a driving tour and take you out to different areas. And um, obviously they'll allow you to drive, but they'll stop and do geology and ecology and herbivology. That's not the right word. <laughs> Her herbivology. <laughs> it's a study of herb. <laughs> Botany. He's a very interesting dude. <laughs> Corbin, have we been saying saguaro wrong yeah. for like a year? Yeah, it's sawaro. Sawaro. Sawaro? Yeah, it's not saguaro. Maybe now we should know. have learned some Spanish before we came to the southwest. I don't know. Sawaro. Saguaro. <laughs> Look, we just take you to the places, okay? That's that's what we do. We learn this stuff after. We <laughs> yeah. Later on, after we've been and we learn some things, we'll come back and we'll tell you, like, Saguaro is actually Saguaro. If you're looking for a longer hike, the loop gives you two access points to the Cactus Forest Trail. We chose to get on the trail from the south entrance due to limited parking at the north. This highly traveled dirt trail is excellent for hiking, horseback riding, and capturing the beauty of this national park. We couldn't think of a better place to end our time in Arizona. Join us next week as we visit 29 Palms, seek out adventure, explore Joshua Tree National Park, take a trip back in history, and visit a very cool tank museum. Thank you for watching. We'd love to share our journey with you, so hit that subscribe button and also the notification bell so you know when a new video is uploaded. And don't forget to leave your comments down below and hit the like button.